90% of chips in Europe come from outside the region. So this creates a problem because it limits innovation and the, the size of the chips are going to get bigger. And we have to invest more on, into the chips. So the, the issues and the problems we see is, one, is the cost of the chips and the threatens, um, threatens the access to the market um, of various innovation companies. Uh, this includes the car industry and um, if you put your, your data into the cloud, it risks being um, data, it has data risk and problems. So what we do at Intuitive Neurons, we shrink the numbers to process data faster. We have two products that we're looking to bring to market. One is focused on um, low power chips, um, embedded IoT and Edge. And the second one is for high performance AI acceleration. And we do that by shrinking the technology. So compared to the leading 32-bit GPU, we deliver performance of 65% reduction in energy, four times um, smaller in compute, and eight times smaller utilization of memory, and we're five times smaller in size, which is important when you're building dense chips for the future. The market is huge, but it's dominated by one company, and we don't see that we're in that space. Where we see ourselves is in the market where people are looking for affordable AI and to build innovative AI for the future. We see, by the time our chips arrive in market, and in 2029, we will have about 0.2% of this market. Our products are being developed in conjunction with IP, so we're not looking to build a big team. What we're looking to do is use AI and partner with best-in-breed partners to bring our products to market. And we start with our software product, which runs on the leading hardware today, and then we transition into hardware, programmable hardware, and then our chips arrive later in 2027 and 2028. In terms of go-to-market, our strategy is to um, bring our software product to, to universities and academic institutes because they can innovate and deliver new AI architectures and showcase what we can do with our technology. Then our chips will arrive in 2028 and there we look to accelerate the market with our identification and building data centers. Today it's just me, but I'm not alone. I'm working with, I've been working with a partner in, in Berlin, I'm based in Munich, uh, Synergate, who's been helping us develop our AI algorithms. And we have a partner, FIDAS, who brings together ARM, who we're part of their member, flexible access program, and AMD FPGA technology. We've also been reached out to by Altera, and so we are working with the leading chip providers. Our ask is 200K in a safe or convertible loan to engage with our lead partners and build the core team and leadership team. <laughs> then we're looking for 200 million to start our um, chip design. Thank you. What's my downside if I would be your investor for the first two or three million if you fail to get into a chip production in 2027, 28. What do I get, what, what, what am I left with? So today I'm bootstrapping my own, co my own company. So it's just me, but I'm bootstrapping it. The goal therefore is to develop the IP and build a foundation so that we have the technology which is saleable and it's a downside risk for any potential investor. Right. We're also partnering and talking to and have NDAs with the largest chip companies in the world. So this includes ARM and AMD, who are competitors of the leading provider, which is N NVIDIA, who had 90% share. So we, we see the challenges and we understand the market. I have 40 years in tech and I understand how to address the hardware market. Um, one of my questions is, um, is do you see this as more market risk or more technology risk? Like more on the commercial side or more the tech side? So on the tech side, um, because we're shrinking the numbers, right, there's very low risk. One of the key advantages we have over our competitors is that we can do mixed precision and compute all in one go, whereas the competitors, they have to change their precision and crunch one at a time. So that's, that's a performance advantage. And we do that by shrinking the mass unit. 
us an advantage. Um, on the business side, obviously I'm a solopreneur, so building a scaling team and getting a go-to-market team is a challenge. So what we've done, we've, very early on, I spoke with Avnet, one of the biggest um, resellers of hardware. It's hardware is a conservative industry, and we're under NDA with them, and they're also um, part of the AMD program. I'm, I'm, I'm troubled with the, the, the number that you ask for two million. This is, this is if, if it's working out as you said, it's solving one of the biggest problems in chip manufacturing, in particularly for AI application, robotics, and so on and so forth. Yes. It was 200K to start. So, so, so that, I also reacted to that. So I would say if you would have asked here for 50 million or 100 million, I could relate to that because it's, it's so intensive in terms of capital, in terms of changing an industry. So what we're doing is unique, is that we're wrapping our IP around existing IP. So we're on the ARM flexible access program. So essentially we're a co-processor. So all we need to do is bring in other people's technologies, wrap it around ours and get to market as fast as we can. There's a narrow market window and there's a race for brain size computing. So that's what we're looking to achieve. And so I understand the challenges, but I believe it's possible and I believe there's a narrow window um, around chat GPT seven time frame for something like what we're looking to achieve. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.